The Two Trees TS2 is a behemoth of a laser engraver with a total engraving size of up to 450 millimeters squared. It features a powerful 10 watt laser head, supposedly capable of cutting eight millimeter plywood, but also suitable for a range of other materials. And intriguingly, it also has an autofocus system. With good power, enormous size and ease of use, is this the best hobby engraver yet? Quite possibly, but at $700, it's not a budget option either. So let's take a closer look and see if it's worth the asking price. I'm James Bruce, and you're watching MUO Reviews. The TS2 arrives in kit form with three boxes to unpack and everything is very well packaged so you should have no shipping problems. It's pretty easy to put together with the included instructions though it is tedious and it took me about an hour or two in total. However, a number of the pieces are kind of pre-constructed. I mentioned the working area of the machine at 450 mil squared but the mechanics and structure of the machine add on to that, of course. So the overall size is 72 centimeters wide by 73 centimeters deep and 17 centimeters tall. Though, of course, you want to leave a little extra space on top uh, if it's inside, say, a shelving system for moving your parts around. As you can see, it is literally enormous and I had trouble fitting it in the frame. Now, because of its size, it actually employs a very neat cable tray mechanism. They are very cool, but I wouldn't say they're a reason to choose this machine over another. Uh, it's more of just a necessity of scaling up. At some point, trailing wires becomes impractical and an obstacle to the moving axis. So you do need a proper cable tray system. It really works well and everything looks neat and tidy with the cables all uh, nicely routed. The only thing that annoyed me about the cabling is that it comes with this air tube uh, ready fitted into the cable trays and it took me forever to figure out what that actually was for. The answer is it's not for anything if you don't also purchase the vacuum attachment, uh, which I wasn't sent to test. So you can either pull that out or just leave it dangling like I have in case you want to upgrade in future. But it does kind of take away from that overall very thought out and well-designed industrial aesthetic. It looks a little bit messy. Featuring a complex lens system and 10 watt laser power, the TS2 can achieve up to 0.01 mil accuracy for super fine details. In addition, it should be able to engrave things like glass, ceramics, aluminum, slate, and stainless steel. You can see some examples of that that I did later in the review. Okay, let's talk about safety first because that's always a concern with laser engravers. Included in the box is a generic pair of laser blocking safety goggles, great. However, it also shields the actual laser itself uh, with a block down there, which should be sufficient in most cases. And on top of that, you'll find another laser blocking shield on the front of the machine. So this should stop any stray beams or reflections from bouncing out horizontally if you're looking at it at eye level, particularly with children. Now, what it doesn't include is an enclosure as the TS3 did, obviously, because it's massive. Now, personally, I would rather have the ease of use than an enclosed space, but then I have a workshop to locate this in, so fumes don't really matter so much to me. If you're working with plastics or just understandably don't like your house to smell of burnt wood, then placing this inside of enclosure is going to be a necessity and it will need to be a big enclosure, obviously, because this thing is massive. Now on top of that, the TS2 features a gyroscope and this is so that it can detect any falls or tilting of the device, which could potentially leave a laser firing off in random directions. If at any point the gyroscope detects more than 15 degrees of tilt, it will shut down. There's also a big red stop button here, which will completely reset the device too. This is also useful as a basic power button. Now it does also include a micro SD card and supposedly Wi-Fi connection. However, since there's no on-screen controls or LED panel here, uh, you would need to use the terrible Wi-Fi app to set that up, which I didn't bother with. I tried that with the TS3 before and it's bad. I would just recommend ignoring it. Another neat design feature I really appreciate is the ruler that you find on the X at the bottom and then the Y axis on both sides, though not at the top. 
and these are great for getting accurate measurements of your material so you can then resize your design in the software a little bit easier. The only complaint I have about these rulers is that they don't actually correspond to the zero position of the laser head so you can't use them to accurately position your material on the burn surface. They're literally just there as a sort of bonus utility feature rather than a functional part that corresponds to the engraving. So finally, it also features an auto-focusing system. Once you've imported the settings into Lightburn, you'll find a number of custom buttons which let you set the thickness of the material that you want to cut so that it's focused in the, the middle of the material, or you can set it to engrave where it's focused on the top. You can also raise or lower the z-axis manually to put in something larger or to manually change the focus if you want. Now this is really neat and it eliminates the need to use those sort of measuring discs to get the right height. And it's all due to the probe on the side of the engraver head here. So it moves down and then it hits the surface and then it knows the distance so it can move up or down depending on what it is that you want to do. Now this alone I think is my favorite feature about the TS2 and I hope that gets incorporated into more machines. Okay, let's talk about performance. Two Trees claims it can cut up to eight millimeters plywood. Now, it could have been the plywood I was testing with, maybe it was a hardwood type, but I just couldn't achieve that. Slowing it down just resulted in, well, charcoal. It can, however, cleanly cut through anything up to three to four mil easily. However, I did need to use two passes and I found their recommended settings to be quite optimistic. Engraving was mostly superb and the auto-focusing system really comes into its element here to ensure distance to the surface of the material is perfect and that ultimately means a higher resolution and sharper output. I also tried cutting some plexiglass and unfortunately I wasn't able to cut through the uh, pink one, however the black material did work fine. Plexiglass is not a material I work with often though, so if you have more experience with the settings there, you might have better luck. Engraving onto stainless steel on this little dog tag that they sent me to test with worked pretty well actually. I was quite impressed with the definition that you can get. However, working with such small pieces and the exact positioning required there really highlights the difficulty of precision work. The lack of a camera on top means that you're just guessing most of the time. And even though the frame feature in the software made it look like this was good to go, I mean, it's mostly centered, uh, clearly it wasn't on the y-axis. It's tricky. So I think, again, if you need to do exact uh, detailed positioning to the millimeter sort of thing, then you really need to spend more on a model equipped with an actual positioning camera that looks down on your work and then gives you a live feed to lay out your design on the object. It is tricky working with smaller things here. I also tried some of these thin metal business cards and while I can't work out if the environmental credentials are good because it's entirely recyclable or bad because it's a horrendous waste of metal, it does look cool. Don't scan this though, you'll get my Wi-Fi password. Now, you might be able to see a slight skew on the image there, and that's because I had some kind of alignment problem on the y-axis. This happened both at the bottom where the joint was brushing against the metal, and then again on the front here. The tolerances were a little bit off, moving the bearing the slightest of tenths of a millimeter left resulted in grinding against the sides. It was a bit frustrating, but a quick back and forth with support located the issue, and it was an easy fix without parts. I just needed to tweak it. So I also knocked up this uh, Catan resource card holder and this terraforming Mars uh, dual layer player board pretty easily. So this is made of, uh, I think it's three, four millimeter plywood, quite thick, quite substantial wood, um, but it, it will vary on your results because of the type of glue used between layers is different depending on the plywood. So there's not much point in copying my settings or anything, but for reference, I believe these were 100%, 200 millimeters per minute and two passes. That seemed clean enough to do these. And to really highlight the great sort of large scale nature of this printer, I was able to cut this tree of life designs. So the larger scale can really add a lot of creative potential there. Even things like this card holder wouldn't have been possible on any of the other engravers I've tested because it's so wide. 
So is the Two Trees TS2 the laser engraver for you? With 10 watts of laser power, it's fairly average in terms of cutting performance, but the main selling point is the size. And if you need to work with much larger projects and found other laser engravers quite limiting, then obviously that will be the biggest deciding factor for you. I will also say that the autofocus and auto homing uh, is something I really appreciate. It just means that you can do everything in software. So once you've got your material down, um, you can close up the enclosure, step away from the machine and just do everything on the computer side. You can tell it to focus there. I don't like having to babysit machines and fiddle with the height. I think it's something that we all forget about. And with this, you get buttons in the software to do it all. The axes are all a sort of standard X, Y, so positive in the up and right direction, so there's no quirks to have to deal with there. Zero, zero is this point here, and it's pretty easy to use. It's just overall a very smooth experience and very well built. Beyond that, it's a matter of finding out what settings work for you and the materials you're working with. It's not perfect by any means. These rulers on the side are basically unrelated to the operation of the machine. They're a useful feature to have, but they don't correspond. And it would have been really nice if they were actually aligned to the zero point of the laser engraver. At around $700, you do really need to think about if this is uh, something that you need to be this big. The autofocus is nice, but if you don't need that size format, then there's very little reason to go above three to four hundred dollars. You could buy something just as powerful with a 10 watt laser, but not as big. However, the size does really open up your options a lot. In the past, I've come across projects that I've had to cut into two halves or just give up on completely because it's too big. And obviously, if it's something like a card holder, you can't just reduce the size a bit and expect it to work. It won't. So the size of the machine is, is definitely a fantastic point, but just think about whether you need it that big. Anyway, that's it from me. Hit me up in the comments if you have some questions about the TS2 that I didn't cover. Otherwise, hit like and consider subscribing for more gadget reviews, giveaways, and more from all of us at makeuseof.com. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.